In this video, I want to go over a really famous book. This is the book, Complex Analysis, written by Al Fors. You'll notice that the book looks very similar to Baby Rudin, uh, Principles of Mathematical Analysis, written by Rudin. It has the same type of cover. It's part of the International Series in Pure and Applied Math. Look at that, just beautiful book. Let's take a look inside this classic. It looks like someone wrote there, I can't really make out the name, um, John R. something. Please, yeah, I don't know. Really, really interesting. I wonder where that person is now. Here is the inside cover, Complex Analysis, an introduction to the theory of analytic functions of one complex variable. Lars V. Alfors, professor of mathematics, Harvard University. Let's see when it was written. 1953, that was a long time ago. Wow, I mean, this is a really old book. To the memory of Ernst Lindelof, cool. Let's read part of the preface. In American universities, a course covering roughly the material in this book is ordinarily given in the first graduate year. So this book is intended for graduate students. That is the purpose of this book. The way of presenting the material differs widely. In some schools, the emphasis is on teaching a certain indispensable amount of classical function theory. In others, the course is used to confront the student for the first time with mathematical rigor. It goes on and talks more about the book. Here he writes his name at the end of the preface. Lars V. Alfawars, Winchester, Massachusetts, January 1953. I just can't believe how old this book is. So this is the table of contents. And, you know, even though Alfawars says that this is, you know, mainly written for graduate students, as an undergrad, you can actually read and learn from this book. Now, this is a very rigorous book, so keep that in mind uh, before jumping into it. Starts with complex numbers, lots of stuff there. I mean, quite a bit of information. And then it goes on to complex functions. Really, really nice. Here we have complex integration. Then chapter four is on infinite sequences. You see a lot of these topics you cover, uh, you know, in an undergrad course. It's just not all of them. A lot of them are, are more advanced. Chapter five is the Dirichlet problem. Chapter six is on multi-valued functions. Wow, I can smell the book and I'm pretty far away and it smells really, really good. It has that old book smell. I'm just gonna give it a whiff here. Wow, wow, what a, what a classic book. This is chapter one on complex numbers, the algebra of complex numbers. It is fundamental that real and complex numbers obey the same basic laws of arithmetic. We begin our study of complex function theory by stressing and implementing this analogy. It talks about arithmetic operations. From elementary algebra, the reader is acquainted with the imaginary unit i, with the property that i squared equals negative one. And then it goes on and talks about um, a complex number. It says, if the imaginary unit is combined with two real numbers, alpha and beta, by the process of addition and multiplication, we, at we obtain a complex number, alpha plus i beta. Alpha and beta are the real and imaginary part of the complex number. Yeah, and then it goes on and tells you some more things. For example, if alpha is zero, we say it's a pure imaginary number. He calls it purely imaginary. And if beta is zero, is it, of course, it is real, right? So every, every real number is also a complex number. He talks about how you add the complex numbers and how you multiply. Here's the rest of section 1.1. So you see it's not very long. And then we have some exercises that are intended uh, for us to test our skills with. Unfortunately, there are no answers in the back of the book. <laughs> so uh, that's not something we get uh, with this classic book. This, I believe, is from the chapter on infinite sequences. Yes, and you see all this writing in the book. This was not me. This was someone a long time ago, perhaps in the 50s, right? Trying to understand what was going on in the book, trying to really understand this and really learn the mathematics. And you know, that's kind of what you have to do a lot of times to understand books like this. This is a very, very rigorous book. I mean, it's not big, but it's rigorous. It's very comparable to Rudin. I mean, even, even the cover, I mean, look at the cover. If you've seen older versions of Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Rudin, I mean, it's the same color in everything. It's part of the same series, except this is the complex analysis version. Here you can see that whoever was using this book to learn um, struggled a little bit, or at least, you know, they were making some comments on the side. 
typically I use a piece of paper for stuff like this and I will write in the book but it depends on the book like I probably wouldn't write in this book um, mainly because you know it's so old and I don't know it's it's a classic book uh, but in a lot of the newer books depending on the book you know I'll circle stuff and but for stuff like this, uh, you know, maybe a piece of paper is uh, better. Here it introduces the cauchy riemann equation. So this is something that every single undergrad who takes complex variables will learn relatively near the beginning of the course. So again, even though this book is, you know, primarily written for graduate students, there is a lot of undergrad material covered. At the same time, it's comforting for people to know that, you know, it's a grad level book that covers undergrad materials. So you know, if you go to grad school, you'll see a lot of the stuff you learn uh, as an undergrad, you know, pretty much almost all of it uh, will come up again. So it's worth reading for undergrads also, especially if you can find like a, like an older used copy on the internet. Um, I don't know if this book is still in print. Like, I don't know if it's, you know, still out there. I'm assuming it is uh, mainly because, you know, it's such a famous book. You know, the All Fours book is considered, you know, a classic. It's Shocking that I actually haven't reviewed this book until now. Here are some of the exercises uh, from the chapter on complex integration. And you see there's not that many exercises. That really is one of the downsides of the book. There's not tons of problems and there's no solutions in the back of the book. I mean, that is really, uh, you know, not good. You know, if you're looking for a beginner book, um, I would say you could get this one, but you probably want to get other books as well um, that are helpful for beginners. Other books on complex analysis that are written, you know, more for beginners. I don't think uh, this is a, you know, a beginner book by any means. It's not really written for beginners. I mean, as Alfors clearly states, right, it is for graduate students. That was his intention. But again, even though it's for grad students, you know, an undergrad can read this and work through this. If you look at these exercises here, I mean, these are exercises that, you know, if you are taking complex variables right now and you're covering integration, you can probably do some of these. I mean, you should be able to do some of these problems. Maybe not all of them. I mean, we're human, we get stuck, no one's perfect, but I mean, you could probably do number one. I mean, you could probably do that problem. It's not that hard. So overall, this is a great book. It's a classic. Um, now, there are some disadvantages. Uh, it's not as easy to read as a lot of the other complex analysis books out there. And it doesn't have answers to the exercises. But still, you know, it's kind of a like a piece of history, right? Uh, it's, it's an old book. It's a classic. It's one of the, you know, nicest treatments uh, there is out there. It has a lot of information. I mean, this book... This book has a ton of info. It's just, it's a rigorous book. It's kind of like uh, principles of mathematical analysis in that sense. It's one of those old school rigorous books. If you're trying to learn complex analysis, should you get this book? I would say yes, but also get other books. Um, the book by Brown and Churchill is also really good and it's much easier to read than this one. Or the book by Saf and Snyder uh, is also very good. And it would be, you know, a really good complement to this book. Again, the book is Complex Analysis by Al Fors. And I don't know, I don't know if this is the first edition. I, I would have to Google it to see when the book was published. Uh, but again, this one, if you just look, is from 1953. So it might be, but again, I don't know. Lars Al Fors, Harvard University. Really, really old school. Good luck.